Hi, my name is Ant. This is a follow-up video to one that SysModel did previously on using Nemo to extract hydrodynamic parameters using a MATLAB wrapper. In this video, we'll discuss how to do the same thing, but with the terminal. To avoid repetition, we won't cover the things that the two processes have in common. We'll just cover the differences between the MATLAB and the terminal. So to get an understanding of the whole workflow, it's important to watch that other video. Putting that aside, why would you want to use Terminal in the first place? Well, obviously if you don't have access to a MATLAB license, this is the process for you. But additionally, the Terminal will allow you to write a script to take several geometries into a queue and run them one after another automatically. Whereas with the MATLAB wrapper, you would have to run each of those geometries individually. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will not be covering the creation of a model in a CAD program, nor the transforming of that model into a .dat file. We will cover some of the input files that are necessary for running in terminal, such as the input.txt. Then we will discuss running the Nemo executables in terminal, and visually displaying those outputs. I have here the open terminal, which has been directed down to the main folder, wherein I keep the preprocessor, the solver, and the postprocessor. These are the Nemo executables that will be running our calculations. I also have all of the model files. In this video, we'll be working with Cylinder 4. Within Cylinder 4, you have the mesh and the results in the Nemo.cal that was discussed in the other video. You also have an input.txt file, which is literally just a zero. I don't know why Nemo requires this to run in the terminal, but it won't work without it. We also have the Nemo.cal, just as from the previous. However, this time we don't have a MATLAB script to write in the uh, number of frequencies and the range of those, the wave directions that they're coming in from, or the depth, which all have to be entered by hand now. In addition to specifying the folder that we're going to be working out of and the .dat file, as well as the number of points and number of panels, which are just the same as previous. Once this is all specified, we can go into our id.dat file, which is still up in the main folder. There it is and make sure that we're pointing to the right file. Once that's done, and everything is saved, we can go into our terminal and select the preprocessor executable. There we can see it's telling us the wave frequencies, the direction, as well as the radiation problems and the forces. So because we have six degrees of freedom, we're going to have six uh, radiation problems, and because we have six resulting generalized forces, we've got six forces. Now we will run the solver. Those warnings are just indicating that something might be facing into the z equals zero axis, but if we go into our cylinder four file, and we open up the actual dot dat in BEM Rosetta, which I'll pull up here. It looks like this. The water line marked in blue there indicates that nothing is really above or even on the z equals zero axis. It might be a little concerned that the edges of some of the faces are along the axis but that won't affect our results. All right, our problems have all been solved by Nemo. Now we can run the post processor. That should save everything. And now if we go back into Ben Rosetta, it's already selected cylinder four. We should be able to load that, and we have our added mass, we have our force of excitation, and all six degrees of freedom.
One of the reasons why you may want to use the terminal, even if you have access to MATLAB, is in the case where you want less than the default six degrees of freedom. For instance, if you only wanted heave and yaw, you would delete everything else and set the number of degrees of freedom to two. Then you'd have to do the same for the generalized forces because the two sections need to mirror each other. So he corresponds to the z direction, and then our yaw corresponds to the z direction of our point. We reset the numbers. Everything else can be left the same. Just make sure to save. Now, if you allow this to run in MATLAB, you'll get errors because the MATLAB wrapper can't handle it. However, the terminal can. So if we go into here and we just get rid of all of the results from the last run, except of course the .dat file, just so that we're starting with a clean slate, we can go in and hit the preprocessor. There now we can see that we only have two radiation problems and two forces. So it is recognizing our change. Now if we enter the solver, you will see that we actually have far fewer problems to solve just because we have fewer degrees of freedom to account for. I'll use the power of editing to cut ahead. And we're done. All right, now we'll hit the post processor. And if we check, yes, we have results. And bringing up Ben Rosetta, we'll leave the previous run on just for reference's sake. Uh, we selected he, so let's see what that gave us. We'll open up the exact same file. And you see that nothing appears to have happened, except that it did. We didn't select Surge, though, so why is Surge showing up? Or Sway? Well, that's the issue. I'm not sure if it's Bam Rosetta or if it's Nemo itself, but when you select less than the default six degrees of freedom, it still saves it in the order of the six degrees. So it saves it in the order of surge, sway, heave, roll, pitch, and yaw. So if we'll take a look at our heave, which was first, if you notice this line, it perfectly lines up with what was saved as surge. And it's the same for our yaw. Oh, it's really zoomed in there. But uh, it's just a matter of the y-axis scale. This is the same. If the programs that you're going to be using at the end of this pipeline are capable of recognizing the heave even though it's labeled surge or changing those file names to what they should be, then this will work for you. If not, it's probably best just to stick to the six default degrees of freedom. I hope that this walkthrough on using Nemo in the terminal to extract the hydrodynamic parameters of a three-dimensional object has been helpful to you, and I hope that you have a good day.